welcome you all to 12th Man Studios in the south end zone of Kyle Field and to another edition of The Beat. Today we begin with the one you've all been waiting for. This weekend in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, it was college baseball's most anticipated matchup of the regular season. In a three-game set from Alex Box Stadium, it was second-ranked Texas A&M at number one, LSU. Over 30,000 combined were on hand for the trio of contests on the Bayou, and the series did not disappoint. Thursday night, LSU won with a walk-off at the bottom of the ninth. Danny Zardone provided the game-winning hit and RBI. The Tigers take the opener 4-3. Friday, the Aggies took a 5-2 lead into the late innings. They couldn't hold it. LSU works back and pushes past A&M 9-6. That left A&M Saturday to salvage. And the Aggies got four in the third, all of them with two outs. They did get some help from LSU mistakes early in the inning. The Ags would never relinquish the lead. Andrew Vinson, two and a third scoreless in relief. He picked up the save. He was terrific. Ryan Burke added a late home run, the only one hit in the entire series. The Aggies get the finale six to two. They stave off the sweep. They swung the bats really good against Simons, and you know the, the first two innings will make two big momentum defensive plays to keep the game scoreless and. You know, Logan Taylor and then a great relay throw to Alamon there in the second inning. And, you know, just like at the third, we score four runs with two outs. And uh, Simon settled in once he got lathered up, started sinking the ball a little bit better. And, you know, go to Matt Kenny, gives us five big outs, and, and Vinny was able to finish it up. A&M exited Baton Rouge one game behind the Tigers in the race for the SEC's Western Division title. With the win on Saturday, the Aggies certainly kept hopes alive to land a national seed. A strong final month of the regular season will secure one of the coveted spots in the top eight. Final month that begins when the Aggies visit Tennessee this weekend. The Beat is presented by AT&T, building you a better network. Texas A&M baseball coming off that one versus two matchup the weekend in Baton Rouge against LSU. We've got a couple of players with us right now. J.B. Moss, he had three hits in the series, and Logan Taylor had four. They both join us on the beat. And, fellas, thanks for taking the time over here in our new studio. Yeah, thanks for having thank us. You. All right, let's get to it with this LSU series. It was much anticipated. A lot of college baseball fans wanted to see what happened between the Aggies and Tigers over the weekend. And, Logan, did the atmosphere and the environment of it all, a one versus two at Alex Box Stadium, live up to it all? I think it certainly did. Um, I know on the outfield, the uh, the fans in left field and right field, I know JB could get a piece of in center field, uh, pretty rowdy. Um, I think we heard about pretty much everything but the game, that they were yelling at us, our fa about our families, our girlfriends, everything. It, uh, it, it was pretty crazy. Alex Box Stadium, certainly true to form there. Yeah, but, for but sure. <laughs> JB, what did it mean for this team to salvage something in the series and get a win in that finale. It was huge, especially, you know, coming off the, the two tough losses the first two nights. And, you know, as far as just an RPI thing, you know, it was big to come out of there with a win. That's the first thing Coach told us after after Saturday's game was, you, you know, you don't know how big that was to, to show a lot of toughness and get that win, um, you know, Saturday afternoon. In that game, Logan, you had some incredible defensive plays. One was nominated for Sports Center's top 10. You threw a couple of guys out at home using the relay on one of them. Do you feel like you're getting more comfortable in left field seeing this is your first full season at that position? Uh, yeah, I do think I'm getting more comfortable. Um, I've been working a lot with Coach Seeley and guys like JB and Nick Banks and Chorby. And um, I don't know, every day just spend a little extra time out there trying to get better reads and uh, see the ball off the bat a little bit better. I think I'm getting... I haven't figured it out yet, but I'm getting a little bit better, yeah. <laughs> and JB, did you get a sense of just how important defense is when two really good teams that are evenly matched are going at it? Because 
I really thought you guys, the Aggies, hit the ball a little bit better than LSU on Thursday and Friday, but lost. I thought LSU hit it better on Saturday, mm -hmm. but lost. I mean, it, does defense really ring important in a series like that? It really does. No matter if it's one versus two or, you know, one versus whoever, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think everyone's making a big deal out of the new baseball, but I really think that it all starts and ends on the mound. It starts and ends with pitching and defense. And, you know, anytime we play really good defense and we have a zero in that error column, I think really good things happen for us. So um, defense was huge this weekend. Both teams made incredible plays. You know, Blake's play was unbelievable. Logan made some great plays. Um, LSU made some great plays. You know, um, as far as the momentum swing, I think defense had a lot to do with that. As big as the series was, Logan, is it important to remember it was just a part of conference play and you guys still have about a month to go in the regular season with some big things that you have a chance to accomplish? Yeah, I think it is. Um, you know, we just want to take every game, one, one game at a time, and uh, just be focused on who we're playing that day. And, um, you know, we hope to be playing LSU at a neutral site. Hopefully, uh, maybe if it's in regional or super regional or whatever it is, we want to see them in Omaha, obviously. But um, we, we just want to take it one game at a time, one series at a time, and not get ahead of ourselves. And just the, the every day that baseball is, JB, I mean, take Thursday or Friday, you lost both of them. Mm -hmm. But even Saturday when you won, at what point in time do you flush <coughs> a result and move on to the next one, knowing that baseball games, they just come at you so rapidly? Yeah, after those first two games, I believe they're both night games. And, you know, once that clock hits midnight, you know, you got to recharge and you got to start over. I mean, this league is so competitive. Every series is a big series. Every game is a big game. And it's really easy to, you know, you're down, you lose the first two games, it's easy to go lose that third game. You know, if you don't play well, it doesn't matter who you play in this league, they're going to beat you if you don't come ready to play. So that's something Coach really preaches on us is, you know, starting over and starting fresh. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I would say once that, once that clock gets midnight, it's important, you know, um, to restart and not let the previous day um, go into the next day. Yeah, it was an epic series. It's what all of us waited on. But, yeah, you got to get rid of it, and you're off to Tennessee this weekend. Good luck up there, fellas. Thanks for the time. Thank, Thank you. you. That's J.B. Moss and Logan Taylor right here on the beat. The Aggies and Vols this weekend. This segment of The Beat is brought to you by Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. Franklin Field in late April, there's no place like it when it comes to track and field. The Aggies this weekend were in Philadelphia for the 121st running of the pin relays. And once again, success there for this team. We have head track and field coach Pat Henry with us right now. And coach, thanks for coming on today. You bet. Thank you. Well, it's, as always, it, it, it was a good one for you. You came home with some titles and some runner-up finishes. If you were to give an overview of the Aggies at the pins, just in generalities, how did it go for your team? Well, pin relays is uh, it's an evolving meet, and and this year uh, we got beat on the men's side. Actually, it's a professional team we're running against. It's not a collegiate team, so I, we we beat every collegiate team there. So I feel real good about that. Our ladies beat that professional group, so uh, you know I feel real good about that. In four by ones, four by fours, um, we're coming. We won the collegiate division. On the ladies' side, we're getting a little bit better. Uh, Olivia got back in the competition. Men's side, we got beat on the 4x4. Four four. That's the first time we've been beaten a 4x4 four four in a long time. Uh, but we're minus Braylon right now. Until we get Braylon healthy, it's going to be a big challenge. And uh, But we learned a lot about ourselves. Uh, we just about froze to death on Thursday. It was about as bad as I've ever seen. I, uh, I really mean it. I mean, I, it was... It, wind chill it had to be in the 30s, 40 degree temperature, so it was a tough day. But uh, we also learned things about ourselves in a bad environment, and that's good because Eugene can be anything come come national championship. You mentioned Olivia Akpone for the women. She got back on the track right. and ran in the relay, the right. four by four. You did not have Braylon Taplin for the men. Right. Do you get the sense if you can just be fully healthy on both sides? You've got real contenders with the men and women. Well, if, we, if we're healthy, we'll, we'll be in the mix. And, and you know, to, to go to the SEC championships first and go to the NCAA, if you feel like, if I feel like we can be in the mix, then I think we have a good shot to, to come out 
and, and do have a very good performance for our, for our program. Um, you can't win it all the time. Uh, we've been fortunate to win. Um, but if you're in the mix, you got a shot. And uh, so uh, we're going to be in that mix. Yes, pin relays is big, but it's just a step yeah. in the progression that leads you towards those SECs and Starkville and yeah. NCAA championships and Eugene, and then there's the, the, the preliminaries even before that. But right. the next step in the progression is Fort Worth, Texas. That's where you send your team this weekend. Yeah, we go to TCU this weekend. First time we've ever taken a team up to TCU in my time frame here, in my 11 years. So uh, North Texas, um, there'll be three or four other schools there. It's about the right size of competition. You come out of uh, 120 institutions uh, competing against uh, down to about four to five this weekend. It's the level that we need right now. Uh, we'll line some people up and, and try to get some things done again this weekend. Uh, in preparations, uh, we have a week off and then, then the conference meets, so it's coming right down to the end right now. And finally, I wanted to ask you about this field events. Uh, we talk so much about running because you guys are so great in the relays with the men and women, sprints as well, quarter milers, but both the men and women have some potential for points when it comes to SECs and NCAAs in field events as well. No question. Uh, uh, you know, Shelby Vaughn is, is leading the country right now. Um, BJ is, is, is leading the country in the long jump for the men. Um, both Collie twins we have in the triple jumper have done very well. Uh, are in that top four or five, both jumpers in the triple. Uh, our javelin throwers are both in the top five, six in the, in the country. Um, so yeah, our field event people are doing very well. On the women's side, our throwers, our javelin throwers have just had a great meet this weekend. Um, so it, it's very important, the depth we have and, and the kind of team. You can't win with just sprinters. You, can, you cannot win it. Uh, you have to have field event people come through. And uh, you're right, every once in a while we neglect it because, you know, the relays are such a flash event. Everybody wants to see that. And, you, you know, sometimes uh, other events get lost in the mix. But uh, without the other events, we're, we're not a good team. Uh, we're a team, and we have a lot of people competing very well in a lot of events right now. Well, Coach, it was pin relays this past weekend. Now off to Fort Worth. Good luck to yeah. you. Thanks for the time today. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we're looking forward to this meet, and we're looking forward to an off week too, <laughs> and, and then trying to see where we can what we can do at the conference championship. All right, that's Pat Henry right here on the beat, Fort Worth, Texas, this weekend. <laughs>focuses on Texas A&M's swimming and Sarah Henry's success. The Texas A&M women's swimming and diving team has been a perennial power in the collegiate pool for years. For 16 seasons, head coach Steve Boltman has headed the women's swimming and diving program, producing multiple conference titles, 200 conference champions, nine seasons of NCAA top 10 team finishes, and 10 NCAA national champions and 17 Olympians. In a program that focuses on teamwork and family, the move to the SEC would push them harder than ever before. After finishing second at the SEC championships for the third season in a row, the team went on to the NCAA championships hosted by Auburn and garnered a fourth place overall finish. This would be the fourth time the squad finished in the top five nationally under Coach Boltman. Senior Sarah Henry flourished during her four years at A&M, and under the guidance of the swim coaches, she and her team were not only excelling in the water, but in the classroom. At the NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving National Championships, senior Emily Newbert received the prestigious Elite 89 Award, which recognizes the true essence of a student athlete by honoring an individual who excels in competition while achieving high academic standards. 
Newbert is earning a pair of undergraduate degrees while completing her master's in economics. Sarah Henry is another swimmer that excels in the classroom as she pursues a degree in physics. I just love to challenge myself. So I'm challenged in the pool here with Steve and Tanika as my coaches and with the girls, but also being super challenged in the classroom, knowing that there is a career after swimming when swimming's done. At the heart of the team, the Texas A&M Women's Swimming and Diving Program represents A&M on all facets, embracing the tradition of excellence. As the elite class of 2015 swam their way into the record books and completes their time in Aggieland, they were also taught the valuable life lessons Texas A&M holds so dear. What do you want your legacy to be? And for me, it's not always about winning or my own success. I want to be that person that pushed someone or supported someone or was that shoulder to lean on in times of of trouble and um, that's what I really hope that my legacy is. It's such a selfless university. College Station is, it's where my heart is and it's just being surrounded by those kind of people who are just striving to be good people in general and just help out everyone else and um, it just really influences you and makes you want to be the best person that you can. Almost time to say goodbye on this edition of The Beat, but before we go, Texas A&M Women's Golf, they are SEC champions, and on Monday, they learned their first NCAA postseason destination. The Aggies found out on Monday they'll head to San Antonio for NCAA regional play. That'll take place at Briggs Ranch Golf Club from May 7th through 9th. The Aggies are fresh off that SEC championship they won in Hoover, Alabama. Today was just a special day, you know, all in all, anytime you win an SEC championship, that's a dream come true. I'm just really proud of all of them. It was a total team effort this week. Out of the 18-team field, the top six advance. Trail McCombs and the Aggies looking to add another trophy to the case. Also, men's and women's tennis, they have their postseason assignments when it comes to the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament. Log on to 12thman.com for more information on them. We've run out of time on this edition of The Beat. So long, everybody.